Hello, students. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Very good. good morning, ma'am. Right, right, right. We'll start our today's class. See, still I, here I can see uh, GSELM, that is Maulika, right? Then AR, MR. See, actually you are expected to uh, make your register number as profile pic, no? Why still you are not doing? Ma'am, under profile pics change, sir, ma'am. Ah. Express in English, please. Yes. But it is not uh, updated. Ma'am, all the people changed their profile, ma'am. Ah, pardon? Ma'am, all the people have changed their profile pics, ma'am. You have changed your profile pic? But still, I can yes, see some uh, four F9 is with uh, Pavan Kalyan's uh, photo, Cine Hero's photo, F9. Many times I told, but still, okay. Then how you have to change your profile pic? Who is your class teacher, ma? Who is your class teacher? Anna, of course, I know it is. Uh, Sunil sir, ma'am. Sunil, ma Sunil sir, right. So he might have given you instructions. What should be your profile pic? It should be your register number. That means, for example, uh, you are, uh, what is your number, right? 4D0, 4D0, Rami Krishna, right? Uh, she is the one first joined, I think. No, no, some other person. Many times she joins first. Okay, uh, 4D0, so EC of the hyphen 4D0 should be your profile pic, okay? So like that it is changed. Otherwise you do one thing, you ask uh, your class teacher once again. Madam is still asking us to change how to, uh, I mean, what is expected from us? How do we change our profile pic? You get it, uh, get clarity from your class teacher, right? I Because I go through several other classes also and all our EC fine years have modified perfectly. So now, uh, for example, uh, LM is here, right? Lakanam Maulika, right? Uh, now, I need not see LM. Directly, I see your register number. At present, what happens if I click here on your profile, then I will get uh, it is 18NG1A04C9, right? Directly, your profile pic should be 404C9, uh, 4C9. So, like that, okay? Please discuss with your class teacher and uh, uh, try to keep your profile pics properly. And uh, F9, uh, still he is using uh, some cine heroes uh, photos. All that is not uh, accepted, right? So later, if such profile photos are there, if you are removed from the class, then again, it will be very, very difficult for you to join in the class. So to be on safe side, I am giving you information again and again, right? Now let's start our class. Today's class, I have planned many things. Today, somehow, I want to complete our uh, unit too. So, therefore, let me uh, start my class, right? So, uh, the previous slides, I actually, I have to recollect and recap. But uh, yesterday, I have shown you this uh, uh, slide without, uh, what is that? Term? Without any compensation, as the frequency is increased, the gain of the op amp decreases, and it, uh, that decrease is called roll off, right? And from one frequency to one, one frequency, it will be decreasing at, at one particular rate that is at 20 dB per decade. Otherwise, 40 dB, later 60 dB, like that. Okay. So now, these frequencies uh, we call corner frequencies or break frequencies. Right now, uh, in frequency compensation, what we are going to do, we are going to, any, uh, we are going to convert from n number of break frequencies into only one break frequency. That means the frequency where the gain of the op amp starts decreasing, we call it as a break frequency, and that we are going to make it as one. Then what happens means the uh, compensation will be there, and because of that, uh, we will have positive, uh, what is that, gain margin and positive phase margin, and because of that, your circuit will be stable, right? So what is gain margin, phase margin, all that yesterday I have uh, spent uh, uh, sufficient time on that, right? If at all uh, some more recollection is required, we will do it in the uh, revision class on Monday, right? So now let me move forward. Shall I move forward? Yes? 
Yes, ma'am. No. Uh, right, right, good. Right. Uh, actually, where I stopped yesterday, right? The concept of frequency compensation. So, uh, just as I have mentioned, single break frequency. The op amp with single break frequency is inherently stable, but in practice, there will be there will not be single break frequency. There will be three. A break frequencies or corner frequencies. It may be more than that. It may be uh, sometimes two also. But whatever may be the number of break frequencies, we want to make it a single break frequency. For that, what we are trying to do is uh, we consider a transfer function first, right? So for such a circuit, that means consider a system with the three break frequencies. For such a system, what is the transfer function we are going to write? Okay. So what is this transfer function we are assuming? Let us assume that transfer function is uh, like this. How it will be? Let us say, right? Raghavendra Rao. Again, I think Raghavendra Rao, second time, I think. Let me remove from my class. Raghavendra Rao. Shall I remove you? Just. Uh, in front of three dots, I kept. If I get uh, uncontrollable, uh, what is that? Uh, anger, I'll remove you any moment. Right? Why some music is coming? Are you are you in the class or not? Raghavendra Rao. Why Hello? some music is coming? Ah, yes. No, no ma'am. Ah, why some music is coming? Raghavendra Rao. Mic is not working, ma'am. Mic is not working, but it is uh, giving a lot of music now. When we are in the class, you have to maintain uh, silence. OK, if you want to okay. test something, this is second hour class. What did you do first hour? Right, you please take precautions, right? Uh, okay, such things, actually, I told you, uh, I want to cover more syllabus today's class. And again, you are taking a few seconds of my uh, class, right? And this is not the first time, right? Yesterday's class also, you are the one who disturbed the class. Before you join into the class, you verify whether mic is working or not, whether uh, speaker is working or not, all that. Okay? Shall I excuse him for today? Yes, ma'am. Who is that responded? Okay, right. Okay, uh, we teachers should have a lot of patience. So with the patience, I am excusing uh, Raghavendra Rao for today. Right? Let me take my class. So the open loop frequency uh, transfer function uh, we are try, we are trying to write. So we are assuming the transfer function should be like this. OK, so the open loop frequency dependent transfer function for such a system. What is that system? The system with three break frequencies are three corner frequencies. So let us write that uh, uh, equation. So now I'm, to, I'm, I'm just showing you the system. A frequency response, frequency response of loop gain, right? With the three corner frequencies, right? Is this figure clear to you? Yesterday fully we have allotted one hour. Is this figure clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes or no? Right? You you followed, right? Yesterday we have spent a lot of time on that because this is very important from this unit. Uh, if you hear about frequency compensation, whatever may be the circuit. You just draw this diagram, I mean this frequency response curve, and then first you draw non-compensated, and uh, uh, for non-compensated response, uh, roll off, that is uh, 20, minus 20 dB per decade, minus 40 and minus 60 dB per decade, you write. And when you use your compensation, compensating uh, network, or when you use one compensating technique, compensation technique, then these number of, uh, uh, what is that corner frequencies will be converted into single corner frequency only. So you just draw the gain and then like this dotted line. So whatever it may be, as a result of frequency compensation techniques at the output, you have to write this diagram only, right? This diagram only, whatever. Several techniques we are going to learn today. Finally, at the end, in the conclusion, you have to draw this diagram, right? That means this is the uncompensated or non-compensated uh, frequency response, and this is compensated network 
frequency response that is the conclusion so uh, from uh, frequency compensation techniques whatever question you get if you draw this diagram uh, your examiner will understand that you have very crystal clear idea on frequency compensation right if you explain about this diagram also uh, you can uh, write some information and in that way you can whatever technique is given right i will tell you all the techniques now uh, even if you do not remember fully about all those techniques the result if you write you will get uh, good marks right so now uh, for such a uh, what is that uh, the let us write the frequency dependent transfer function for such a system right now that transfer function i am writing here as equation 1 let us see that is open loop gain open loop gain as a function of frequency is equal to first let us come to uh, the denominator right so this is break frequency 1 and this is break frequency 2 this is corner frequency 3 that means uh, uh, i have mentioned pre somewhere previously we have mentioned right the roots of the roots of the characteristic equation uh, explains the stability of the uh, system otherwise uh, during stability we have mentioned right so mod a beta modulus that time we have mentioned that characteristic equation uh, uh, roots will explain what is the condition of stability of that operational amplifier so it may be numerator or denominator right so that's why so let us assume let us assume this and write open loop uh, what is that open loop gain aol which is a function of frequency is equal to gain at f equal to 0 right so what is the frequency of our household supply what is our household ac supply frequency what is the 50 hertz yes very good right 50 hertz right then what is the dc supply frequency what is the dc supply frequency from where you get dc supply ac supply of course ac signal uh, of course if i say if i ask you to set ac sinusoidal wave 1 kilohertz and show it to me i think you ask ma'am you give me function generator i will set uh, and uh, whether i am setting properly or not i will see cro is my i so i will see that waveform on cro and you connect function generator and cro and you will get exactly 1 kilohertz waveform on the screen of cro and you can show it to me right am i correct if i ask you to set 1 kilohertz frequency ac signal can you set with function generator or not have you heard about function generator yes ma'am right okay so uh, don't take me into your lab again right this is uh, uh, what is that function generator and this is cro CRO is the I2 electronics engineer, so you cannot see how much supply you are getting all that. Therefore, CRO is your I, so you connect function generator to CRO. CRO probe you will be connecting at the input terminals of the function generator, and your function generator will have uh, what is that frequency variation and amplitude variation. So uh, you adjust these, and on the screen of CRO you can set one kilohertz. signal and you can show it to me am i correct or not can you show can you set 1 kilohertz signal okay let me not deviate actually it is my responsibility to uh, uh, what is that give required information but you people are not responding can you set 1 1 kilohertz frequency on function generator uh, from function generator or not have you used function generator yes ma'am yes then why you are not responding my dear children right okay so why i am why uh, actually i can say uh, what is f equal to 0 means it is dc frequency but i thought of uh, getting that information from you so let me not much of my time uh, not waste much of my time so you know that dc signal uh, regulated power supply you have only amplitude no frequency that means the for the dc signal frequency is equal to frequency is equal to zero zero frequency is equal to zero right so here i want to say uh, 
uh, right uh, at zero frequency that means dc open loop gain that means it is given from manufacturer's data sheet right so open loop gain of the uh, uh, amplifier divided by 1 plus j f by f1 is uh, uh, one uh, corner frequency then next roots right like that let us write this uh, transfer function right so this is the let us assume just assumption only let us assume that this is the transfer function for a system with uh, three break frequencies or three corner frequencies is this equation clear to you right let us write the transfer function of a system with the three break frequencies or corner frequencies right so how we write three break frequencies or corner frequencies like this okay one plus j f by f1 and that means these are the roots of the denominator polynomial right if you arrange uh, you can arrange in this systematic manner so only this you have to learn and keep it in your mind so if you remember this if you keep this uh, readily that means this is the equation or the transfer function we are assuming and writing right so open loop transfer function i mean uh, transfer function for a system with three uh, break points uh, right three corner frequencies is uh, open loop gain that is at f, f equal to zero divided by three roots right one plus j f by f1 one plus j f by f2 into one plus j f by f3 right now uh, you know what are f1 f2 f3 right f1 is uh, less than f2 and f2 is less than f3 and of course all this is uh, where zero is less than f1 f1 is less than f2 and f2 is less than f3 right so here you see this is zero right this is zero and f1 f1 is less than f2 and f2 is less than f3 right so that is what i am just mentioning here now the same thing you can express in uh, what is this uh, yes domain or uh, laplace domain right so the same expression you can write in laplace domain or yes domain of course you just write this expression that is wherever you have f uh, right uh, uh, in uh, yes domain you are writing here so therefore you replace it with these you replace uh, express in yes domain that is s plus omega 1 uh, omega 2 and omega 3 right in s domain same frequency uh, same transfer function we are writing and uh, same condition that is uh, omega 1 is equal to omega 2 uh, less than omega 3 right so that means omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 are uh, 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 i mean 0 less than omega 1 less than omega 2 less than omega 3 like uh, 0 less than f1 less than f2 less than f3 right so frequency is real therefore we will have uh, uh, it is uh, uh, 0 will be less than that okay now this is the equation one is the uh, main equation for our uh, future analysis also again and again we will consider this transfer function with three break frequencies have you noted this uh, equation one have you noted this equation one yes ma'am good okay right now, let yes ma'am ah, right now that is regarding its magnitude and now let us see the phase shift introduced by such loop gain right so three corner frequencies now so uh, total phase shift because due to f1 there will be some phase shift and due to f2 there will be some phase shift therefore the total phase shift will be sum of all these right total phase shift will be sum of all these let us see theta 1 is uh, minus tan inverse tan inverse f by f1 earlier we have x by y now we are writing f by f1 and then uh, tan inverse f by uh, f2 right uh, let first let us write here right tan inverse f by f1 and tan inverse f by f2 and tan inverse f by f3 so all these contributes to a phase shift a phase shift of uh, approximately uh, not approximately phase shift of 90 degrees right so how it is 90 degrees you know that tan inverse uh, what is that uh, let us say if f is equal to at high frequencies right let me get my cursor where it is right so at higher frequencies at high frequencies the total phase shift will be 90 degrees high means 
we say in general as frequency tends to infinity as frequency tends to infinity what happens tan inverse infinity right tan inverse infinity is equal to 90 degrees right so tan inverse f by f1 so if this f by f1 if this value if f is very high at very high frequencies otherwise at frequencies uh, uh, at higher frequencies that means uh, when the frequency tends to infinity then tan inverse infinity means it provides 90 degrees phase shift so here 190 degrees and here 190 degrees and here 190 degrees total uh, 270 minus 270 degrees phase shift will be introduced by the same circuit same system right a system with the three corner frequencies right at very high frequencies right now let us see that uh, let me show you this uh, minus 270 degrees i have mentioned now right now let us see that at f equal to f1 f equal to f1 what is f1 uh, let us see here right at f equal to f1 tan inverse f by f1 now if f equal to f1 then what will happen tan inverse f1 by f1 that means tan inverse tan inverse 1 what is tan inverse 1 what is at f equal to f1 let us write this one as tan inverse f1 by f1 so f1 and f1 gets cancelled tan inverse 1 is equal to how many degrees 45 yes 45 right so like that uh, at frequency at f equal to f1 let me show you this all in a single uh, line right at f equal to f1 theta 1 becomes minus 45 degrees and you can see that f equal to f1 means you just see here right it f equal to f1 right f equal to f1 so therefore you can uh, uh, you can ignore these values right at f equal to f1 you say that it will provide some uh, what is that uh, oh, minus 45 degrees right let me show you this right so uh, this theta, uh, theta 2 that means phase shift introduced by these two we can ignore right uh, for other frequencies now at f equal to f2 next step right that means when frequency is equal to f2 then theta 2 uh, it it goes to its maximum because f equal to f1 means you just see here f equal to f1 here right now frequency is still increased that means f equal to f2 then what happens this first stage it will provide maximum phase shift so that means it is like uh, maximum phase shift means when the frequency is very high tan inverse uh, uh, infinity it is equal to 90 degrees therefore theta 1 will be almost 90 degrees theta 1 will be almost 90 degrees and yet f equal to f2 means tan inverse f by f2 and in place of f we write f2 so f2 by f2 gets cancelled we get 1 so at theta at f is equal to f2 theta 1 become becomes minus 90 degrees and uh, theta 2 becomes minus 45 degrees right so like that total phase shift will be minus 135 degrees right uh, considering that theta 3 is very small right then at f equal to f3 that means you know we are just taking this frequency f initially we have considered f equal to f1 still we are increasing frequency gain decreases and the phase shift introduced we are talking about so at f equal to f1 and at f equal to f2 now at f equal to f3 still frequency is very high therefore what will happen at higher frequencies maximum phase shift will be there therefore theta will provide uh, theta 1 theta 2 both will provide maximum phase shift that is minus uh, i mean minus 90 degrees each and f equal to f3 now so tan inverse the phase shift theta 3 is equal to tan inverse f by f3 tan inverse f by f3 and now we are writing f is equal to f3 therefore you write in place of f f becomes f3 so tan inverse 1 it is equal to 45 so what happens means as the frequency is increased there is a chance if we have a system with the three break frequencies or corner frequencies 
then uh, here maximum phase shift and here maximum phase shift here at f equal to f3 we get minus 45 so total phase shift introduced by such a system will be minus 225 degrees right so total phase shift produced by such a system will be minus 225 degrees is this clear to you or not is this clear to you right? so this is phase shift right so total uh, phase shift. Ma'am. One second, one second. Uh, Chandrasekhar? Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, you are talking, right. You change your program. Ma'am, when, oh. when we get total 360 degrees, ma'am? When we get? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see. Now, what we are discussing, we are talking about the phase shift introduced by such a system, right? So when we get a total uh, 360 degrees, what will happen? Let us see, right? Now, are you able to follow how we got this minus 225? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right? As the frequency is increased, right? As the frequency is increased, what happens? Phase shift is increasing. So initially at F equal to F1, total phase shift is minus 45. When F equal to F2, uh, then phase shift is equal to uh, where is that right uh, 90 plus uh, one, uh, 45 that is minus 135 and after that it is uh, 90 90 and 45 that is 225 that means as the frequency is increased the phase shift introduced by this also will be increasing right now uh, for such a system which is having three break frequencies or corner frequencies the for total Phase shift introduced is by the system itself is how much? Minus 225 degrees. Minus 225 degrees. That means now you see uh, we have considered op amp in inverting mode. Right? Inverting mode means again the op amp will provide another 180 degrees. Op amp will provide another 180 degrees. Then what will happen? This 180 plus uh, uh, 225, uh, I mean, this 180, um, uh, it will provide 180 degrees phase shift means minus 180 it is, right? So that means what happened means there will there is a chance for becoming negative phase margin, right? So therefore, the op amp will become unstable, right? So finally, here what we want to say is uh, whenever you have a system with the three corner frequencies, the amplifier will provide some phase shift and the system is providing some more phase shift, totally the phase difference will be uh, almost it is like uh, it should be, uh, uh, what is the condition here? Let me show you this. Where is that? Right, right. The phase margin, gain margin should be positive and also phase margin should be positive. But what happens means there is a chance for getting negative phase margin, right? There is a chance for getting negative phase margin and therefore what we are trying to do we are trying to add some more components compensation for compensation and we are trying to uh, uh, avoid such a situation where uh, the phase margin becomes uh, negative where the phase margin becomes negative minus 180 minus 225 right so otherwise we can say uh, what is that the circuit so here what I want to convey is, from this slide what I want to convey is, the system with uh, three corner frequencies is providing some phase shift. Again, the op amp is providing some other phase shift. Totally, it is becoming uh, what we say, uh, 360 as your friend mentioned. How much it will become? I have written here. You just see how much it will become. These two you add minus 225 and minus 180. How much it will be? Otherwise, you take the difference of these two. Amma, how much? 225 minus 180 minus 425. Ah, right, right. So that means 
there is uh, above 368 is coming right so finally we can say that uh, okay you subtract 360 from that how much you will get you subtract 360 from that how much you will get 45 ma'am yes 45 that means minimum uh, what is that 45 degrees phase shift should be there to avoid these oscillations right so minimum phase margin sorry minimum phase margin of 45 degrees should be maintained okay to uh, to attain up amp stability to attain stability right we minimum a 45 degrees phase margin we have to maintain then your circuit will become stable so for that what we are trying to do is we are trying to design some compensation circuits let us see what is the compensation circuit first let us define what is this frequency compensation right what is this frequency compensation uh, yesterday i have mentioned once again i am telling see the method of uh, before that you tell me you tell me what is frequency compensation in a practical op amp there will be maximum there will be some more number of corner frequencies so the process of converting more number of corner frequencies into single corner frequency is called frequency compensation is it clear same thing we have written here just now see the method of modifying loop gain frequency response right the method of modifying loop gain frequency response of the op amp right what is this loop gain frequency response that's what we are showing this is the loop gain frequency response right so the method of modifying loop gain frequency response of op amp so that it behaves like single break frequency response which provides sufficient positive phase margin is called frequency compensation technique right so the same thing i have explained uh, in the um, previous diagram all that okay so the op amp may have more number of corner frequencies but what we do the method of changing loop gain frequency response of op amp from more number of corner frequencies to single corner frequency so that it will provide sufficient positive phase margin that is called that process is called frequency compensation right so after convincing that frequency compensation is required in uh, op amp circuits in op amp circuits uh, let us move forward to various compensation techniques right what are the various frequency compen i mean frequency compensation techniques right and these there are two different types one is uh, external compensation technique second one is internal compensation technique right so internal compensation technique means i, I told you we have seen uh, what is that uh, during data sheet of uh, uh, ic 741c somewhere we have mentioned it is uh, internally compensated uh, op amp right so that means some op amps they have internal compensation that means during the fabrication process itself <clears throat> during the fabrication process itself the uh, stability problem will be addressed so that is called internal compensation so ic is available in the market readily with internal compensation so you need not add any compensation circuits at the uh, when you use this op amp right and there are some external compensation techniques also now uh, in today's class we are going to see about these external compensation techniques there are uh, three external compensation techniques all of you write down uh, see these questions you will get in the examination mainly uh, what is dominant pole compensation and explain about pole zero compensation right so if you understand one the second one also we will understand so both you will understand very easily because uh, we understood clearly what is uh, uh, compensation right so these are very simple actually uh, without uh, previous class and uh, uh, before last two three classes directly i can take these uh, techniques 
right you can understand but still i have allotted some uh, time uh, so that you will got, uh, get a clear idea and clear concept on frequency compensation of op amp right so that it will be useful for you for your gate or uh, uh, engineering services exams are like that right okay now there are three techniques one is the dominant pole compensation uh, second one is uh, pole zero compensation third one is uh, feed forward compensation right so now first let us see what is dominant pole compensation right what is this dominant pole compensation so now uh, this is a circuit diagram for dominant pole compensation you don't worry about the circuit diagram it is just our op amp first one is op amp right and here we have added some components here like this one resistor and one capacitor so just by adding a simple resistor and a capacitor we can achieve this uh, compensation or we can provide stability right so this compensation network consists of a simple compensation network with a resistor and a capacitor right your op amp your op amp you can connect it in any manner whatever manner you want whether inverting non inverting whatever you want but at the output we are connecting a compensation network right so uh, the uh, input to the op amp is v in and its output is v not dash because uh, finally after compensation after uh, uh, passing through compensation network only you will get output of the op amp right so therefore this we write v not this intermediate output from op amp we let us indicate with v not dash right so this is what about uh, uh, dominant pole compensation circuit diagram so first you don't worry about this what is this dominant pole compensation right so first you see this circuit right is this circuit clear to you is there any uh, difficulty in this circuit just op amp a resistor and a capacitor and these two uh, components we call this as a compensation network right are you able to follow what is a compensation network here just one resistor and capacitor forms compensation network for this uh, to understand its behavior let us consider the uh, what is that uh, transfer function uh, uh, that means a system op amp with uh, three break frequencies which we have considered uh, in the previous uh, discussions that is a which is avol which is a function of frequency is equal to avol divided by 1 plus j f by f1 1 plus j f by f2 that means three corner frequencies so this is the basis for all frequency compensation just op amp with three corner frequencies transfer function right so this is the transfer function which we have assumed earlier so the same thing we are taking now right so shall i move forward to the next slide yes or no yes ma'am yes okay just uh, circuit and the previously considered expression transfer function we have taken right now let us see the transfer function of the compensating network right so what is the transfer function of compensating network it is the ratio of its output by its input right so this is the compensating network its transfer function is it, its ratio the ratio of its uh, output by its input its output is v not its input is v not dash right so let us write that so the transfer function for compensating network a1 is equal to v not by v not dash right then we have uh, what is that voltage divider rule so many times you might have used right so we have uh, anything any uh, two resistors are connected like this if you want to uh if you want to know the resistance uh, i mean voltage drop across this what we will do and this is the source means that source that source then multiplied with the opposite resistance by total resistance okay the other resistance by total resistance so voltage divider rule is applied here right let me show you this voltage divider rule so this is uh, v not dash here and this is v not now you want to uh, take what is v not that means this v not if you write kvl here 
the voltage drop across this plus this will be equal to v naught dash okay so now let us write how do we write this v naught how do we write this v naught v naught is equal to the total voltage is v naught dash v naught dash multiplied with uh, the uh, sorry required res uh, required uh, component uh, resistance or impedance divided by total resistance or impedance right so same thing we have written here v naught v naught by v naught dash is equal to otherwise v naught dash is equal to right let me write this better are you writing this voltage divider let me show you the same circuit so that uh, here v naught dash v naught dash and this is r r and this is sorry this is what right uh, what is this here capacitance now so let me write this capacitance capacitance now we i i'm asking you to write what is v naught see this voltage divider rule most of the times we use in general so what is v naught v naught is equal to v naught dash v naught is equal to required output voltage across our component uh, capacitance is equal to the voltage that is total applied voltage is v naught dash so v naught dash into the across which component we need that reactance or resistance you have to write it is minus j by xc uh, minus j xc we write capacitive reactance if it is inductive reactance we write uh, xl right so minus j xc because you want to uh, take voltage drop across this capacitor only right the required component resistance divided by total resistance or total impedance that is r plus this thing because it is uh, capacitive we will get r minus j x c right j x c now this v naught and this v naught dash you take it to the other side so v naught by v naught dash is equal to minus j x c by r minus j x c is this equation clear to you or not just applying voltage divider rule to your circuit is this clear to you yes or no emma voltage divider rule okay whether if you remember or not whether you remember or not i am telling you here right how do you how do you calculate voltage drop across otherwise you can take this also some voltage here right and you want to calculate what is the voltage drop across these two terminals then what will you do what will you do so this voltage is equal to total voltage multiplied with your required component resistance by total resistance you might have done some problems also right okay is this voltage divider rule clear to you it is very simple right what is this voltage divider rule means i have written now here this is the resistor and this is the capacitor right now you want what is v not so how do you calculate v not v not is nothing but voltage drop across this resistor how do you calculate when we have supply voltage how do you calculate voltage drop across the required resistor sometimes you can calculate i and from that you can calculate uh, by using ohms law otherwise directly voltage divider right uh, that is uh, we have two resistors r1 and r2 two resistors r1 and r2 right both are having uh, two ohms uh, two kilo ohms let us say right two kilo ohms and two kilo ohms resistors right now if i apply if i apply 10 volts dc what will be the voltage drop across each resistor what is the voltage drop across each resistor 10 volts both resistors are equal so what is the voltage drop across resistor 1 
when we have two equal resistors voltage drop across each resistor will be equal same right for example if these two are not equal these two are not equal right i am not giving you the resistance also of course i have to give resistance so one is 2 kilo ohms other one is 4 kilo ohms then how do you calculate voltage drop across uh, this resistor across a higher value resistor if there will be more voltage so for that you need not write uh, all these what is that uh, um, what is that uh, ohms law you need not write directly your voltage divider rule you can apply same thing i am writing here right so v not is equal to right v not is equal to where i have written right v not is equal to the applied voltage is v not dash v not dash and the required component reactance is capacitor reactance minus jxc so we write here divided by total impedance that means r minus jxc so this is a uh, output v not so v not by v not dash is the transfer function so we can write this v not you bring it this side so this transfer function let us name it as a1 a1 is equal to minus jxc by r minus jxc is this equation one clear to you or not voltage divider rule otherwise i'll give you some homework problems voltage divider rule whether you remember voltage divider rule or not i have given you one example i have written this equation still silence from the other side what shall i understand okay are you able to understand this equation one I, how i have written yes ma'am yes ma'am ma understood then why you people are maintaining silence i thought you are not accepting my statement so i am spending more time uh, i think around uh, uh, 10 59 onwards we are on this equation only two or three minutes i have spent right so you are able to follow this am i correct equation 1 because uh, just the compensating network and its transfer function we have written right so it is here what we do is in this equation 1 what is xc what is xc capacitive reactance xc is equal to xc is equal to am i teaching to electronics engineers or uh, any other uh, branch all ec third year section c students only yes ma'am ah right right what is capacitive reactance xc is equal to 1 by j oh my god Oh, well, of course omega otherwise okay, you can say fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc right fc right so you please substitute what is xc here right because xc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc you just substitute that wherever minus j by xc in that xc you write 2 pi fc 1 by 2 pi fc xc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc r minus j x c so j x c is 1 by 2 pi f c therefore we will get j by 2 pi f c right so i ask you to substitute what is x c x c is equal to 1 by 2 pi f c 1 by 2 pi f c capacitive reactance what is x l inductive reactance xl equal to 1 by 2 1 by j l i mean omega press omega l omega l right so xl is equal to omega l right okay so like that xc is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc you write here and here you rearrange this equation that means you take our common and uh, finally you uh, substitute 1 by minus j is equal to plus j and you will get equation a1 that means this equation can be modified just you rearrange this this numerator denominator multiplication all that right so you tell me whether you got this expression or not make it fast
otherwise you do one thing you just rearrange it later right so i'll give you this equation 3 directly you take this equation 3 right you just observe what we want to convey right this re rearrangement if you take some more time you do it later right let me complete uh, my explanation so a1 is equal to 1 by 1 by 1 plus j 2 pi f rc you will get okay so what is this um, here uh, uh, what is that uh, you consider f you exclude this f and of course j term will be like that so 2 pi r c are there right 2 pi r and c so let us assume these as fd so let us assume that fd is equal to 1 by 2 pi r c f is there right 2 pi r c term is there now what we were trying to do is we want to define another term fd which is equal to 1 by 2 pi r c then what will happen we can write this as 1 by 1 plus j into f divided by fd right can i write that f divided by fd right in the next equation i will show right all of you please take this equation 3 and from equation 2 to equation 3 this denominator multiplication rearranging this equation you do it later so a1 is equal to this expression so in this expression we will get what uh, let us assume fd is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc let us leave j let us leave f so remaining things 2 pi rc and 1 by 2 pi rc let us write fd so then what will happen this a1 equation can be modified as a1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus j into numerator f is there and uh, uh, 2 pi rc 1 by 2 pi rc is fd and 2 pi rc is equal to 1 by fd therefore f by fd so equation previous equation can be written like this right previous equation can be written like this will you agree that will you agree with this yes, yes? ma'am right very good right so 1 by 2 pi i mean 2 pi f uh, 2 pi rc you write it as fd equal to 1 by 2 pi rc so 2 pi rc you write 1 by fd so j f by fd you will get so a1 is equal to uh, the transfer function of your compensating network or break frequency of your compensating network is uh, uh, compensating network is having one break frequency here right so a1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus j f by fd right so now what we have done we have considered the compensating network right the compensating network this network consists of two components one resistor and one capacitor and after that for that compensating network we have written transfer function now let us see uh, in that transfer function uh, we have substituted what is the xc which is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc and after that we have, if we rearrange we will we can write this a1 like this equation 3 so these steps if one or two steps are required you will be doing later now when we get this type of equation here you are defining one more term that is fd so finally we can write the transfer function a1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus j f by fd right so uh, this fd we also call it as break frequency or corner frequency of your compensating network actually our op amp is having three break frequencies or corner frequencies and our compensating network is having one more corner frequency right now next step let us consider the complete transfer function that means the compensated transfer function a dash okay that means op amp gain a op amp transfer function a and compensating network a da, a1 so the total transfer function of the entire system with compensating network is let us write it as a dash a dash is nothing but a multiplied with a right let me show you this right so this is a transfer function of your op amp is a this is a and this is a dash what is the a dash only we have written a1 a a1 right 
So total transfer function, let us name it as A dash. A one we have written, right? So A dash is equal to A dash is equal to A multiplied with A. A one. So A dash is equal to what is A? A is the transfer function with the three break frequencies. That is, this is the op amp with the three break frequencies. What is A one? A one is equal to we have seen just now. Is equal to 1 by 1 plus j f by f d f d therefore when you multiply these two what will happen 1 by 1 plus j f by f d so the total transfer function will become like this the total transfer function will become like this right so have you followed this now when you draw frequency response you will get the compens I mean frequency response like this, right? So for the uncompensated, for the uncompensated uh, amplifier, your uh, uh, plot will be like this. This we are very much familiar with uh, uh, this curve that is frequency response curve, right? This one uncompensated. Now when you multiply it with the compensating network, right? So this will be the frequency response, right? Right, this will be the frequency response. So for uncompensated network, you can calculate bandwidth. That is 3 dB down, you will get bandwidth will be high. And for compensated network, if you calculate bandwidth 3 dB down, it will be very less. So that is uh, very uh, bandwidth is reduced to a greater extent. That is one disadvantage with this technique. But I told you before I start this, uh, compensation techniques I have mentioned. What is this frequency compensation means? The circuit with uh, more number of corner frequencies will be converted into a circuit with a single corner frequency. That is what uh, we will have when we use this compensating network, right? So this is called, it is in the, uh, what is that? The new frequency is added in the denominator, right? So this new frequency is added in the denominator. That means it is the pole. It is pole. And this is also called as it is dominating all other uh, three frequencies. Therefore, we also call it as dominant pole compensation. This is called dominant pole compensation. Right. So this is what about dominant pole compensation. Is this clear to you? Yes. Let me repeat. No problem. Right. This is the compensating network. We understood that compensation is required and this is a compensating network. We have taken transfer function for the compensating network and then uh, we take this is the transfer function we got. And then we have taken total circuit compensation uh, transfer function that is a multiplied with a one. When we multiply uh, these two terms, we get this this equation. So now uh, when you consider the frequency response, that plot will be like this. So this dominant pole frequency will be little lower, right? So FD will be little lower. This is FD, right? Where this uh, starts decreasing. Okay. So like that, we convert the uh, the op amp, which is having three corner frequencies, into an op amp having single corner frequency. Its behavior is changed just by adding one compensating network, right? So because that uh, co frequency component is added at the denominator, that is, uh, we call it as a pole, roots of the denominator polynomial is, are called poles, and the roots of the numerator polynomials are called zeros. Now only uh, denominator one frequency term is added. Therefore, we say that it is a, a dominant pole compensation. This pole is dominating all other frequencies, therefore, we call it as dominant pole compensation. Here, all these uh, marking lines are there. Otherwise, this is a very simple circuit, a simple frequency response, right? So it is like this before, right? Of course, uh, it is uh, like this, like this, like this. And now, this is like this. That's all. All other, uh, what is that? All other lines are just indicating what are the corner frequencies, all that. The plot is decorated. Even in your examination, you have to decorate your plot like this, right? So this is what about dominant pole compensation. Is it clear to you or not? Let me take one, one minute extra, please, right? 
Is it clear to you? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes? Ma right. Of course, again, Monday I will recollect all this and you will get more familiarity. So it may enter into your uh, mind slowly. Right. Then it has some advantages and disadvantages. Advantage is stability and disadvantage is bandwidth is reduced. OK, then uh, let me uh, tell you what is this pole zero compensation because continuation it will be very uh, easy to understand right what is this pole zero compensation from the name you tell me previously we have added only one pole term now what is added i am highlighting now what is added zero zero also no. is added that means yes yes pole and zero both the terms are added in the network right so this is the actual uh, a that is op amp with the three break frequencies or corner frequencies. Now this is the pole zero compensation network. Earlier we have only one resistor R and one capacitor. Now we have added one more resistor here so that this is the new compensating network. This is the new compensating network. All of you please note down this pole zero compensation network, right? Please note down this. And again, similar to the previous case, what we are going to do is we are going to express what is the transfer function for this network A1. Then after that, what we do total A is equal to A into A1 followed A into A1. So what is A1 similar to the previous case? Previously, we have only one capacitor. Now we have both resistor and capacitor. So let us uh, let me show you this. So let us write one as Z1 and another one as uh, Z2, Z1 is R1, right? Z1 is R1 and Z2 is R2 minus J X C2, right? So this is Z1. Here I have shown Z1 and Z2 is R2 minus J X C2, right? So you can write A1 is equal to V0 by V0 dash and A1 is equal to Z1 by uh, Z1 plus Z2. Right, just that means uh, voltage divider rule. Right, Vol according to voltage divider rule and wherever we have uh, Z1, you write uh, R1, wherever we have Z2, you write R2 minus J X C2. So you see all equations are given here. That's all R2 minus J X C2 by uh, R1 Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. Right here, I think it is. It should be Z2 ma Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. R2 minus JXC2 by R1 plus R2 minus JXC2. So you substitute this and finally these terms, uh, these points I don't want to show. Finally you will get, uh, okay, A1 in this form, in this form and here you have to uh, express what is uh, F1 and F1 will be 1 by 2 pi R2 C2. Tomorrow I will discuss this again. So why I want to add this is and F0 equal to another term and then we will get one zero added here, one pole added here. That's why we call it as pole zero compensation. So I will explain this to you clearly tomorrow in the next class. Right? Then A dash is equal to A, A1. You multiply this. So one zero, one pole is added here, one zero is added here. So that's why we call this as pole zero compensation. So it, this is the uh, see conclusion slide is same, right? Whether it is pole zero or uh, uh, dominant pole, anything. So these are about, uh, uh, these are various frequency compensation techniques. Uh, please, uh, uh, I forgot to take your attendance also. Please be online. And uh, I tell you why I have taken uh, a few minutes extra today. I will tell you uh, some uh, two days after two days, I will tell you, right? Let me take your attendance. Uh, how many are there? Currently uh, 54 students are there. Good. Right. Uh, thank you for sparing your extra time because uh, uh, you have to join your next hour class. I will tell you one or two days I won't be available later. That's why I am a little bit. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, eager to t complete this topic. OK, so Monday I will completely explain about these frequency compensation techniques, right? Pole zero compensation and also dominant pole. Other two are very simple and uh, not that much required. I'll just mention those two 
and by Monday we will complete our unit two then, right? Revision everything we will complete. So shall I stop here? Please excuse me for taking few minutes, not few, five minutes extra, right? Shall I stop here, ma? Mm. Okay, okay, right? Sorry yes, for.